back to the picket line. <laughs> you meet the nicest people when you're on strike. I'm so thrilled to be here in the heart of Armenia. at this august event. And before I sing Defying Gravity, <laughs> is the harness in? Or one of Quasimodo's other numbers? <laughs> I'm about to do the John Doyle production of Hamlet, where Polonius plays the guitar. That was for people backstage, I think. Very New York joke. Uh, I want to just say a word about our honorees tonight, um, Stephen Schwartz and Alan Menken. Hey. Uh, <laughs> Stephen is responsible for one of the happiest days of my life. Um, uh, I worked with Bette Midler for 37 years, which is difficult because she's, thank you, she's only 32. And way back, we had a joke. I'd say, what do you want to do? And she said, I want to be a legend. And I said, well, you know, you won't be a legend until they, like, you know, use your name in a lyric in a Broadway show. Well, a year later, I went to see the magic show, and Stephen Schwartz wrote a lyric about Bette Midler. And I called her and I said, you've been enshrined, like Hollanderizing and Margie Hart and the pants of a Roxy Usher. It was. Yes, things we only know about from Broadway lyrics. And it, it was just, it was the happiest day. And, and Alan Menken, of course, wrote Beauty and the Beast, um, in which he offered me the role of the bidet. <laughs> it was wonderful. It was a rain curtain effect. It was... When they moved to the Lunfontaine, they scaled it down, but it... At the palace, it was going to be spectacular. And uh, so I, I but uh, in my, when I used to be a writer yesterday, <laughs> I wrote the Oscar show, and one year they were nominated. In fact, they won. Um, it was uh, for a song called The Colors of the Wind from Pocahontas. And uh, I was, Whoopi was hosting the show that year, and it was one of those numbers, the colors of the wind. Debbie Allen will roast in hell for doing. I mean, she's a lovely woman, I, but I mean, she does these, you know, the Dances with Wolves number where the chorus boys in buffalo skin slouching. And this was one of her numbers. She had Vanessa Williams on like Mount Pocahontas in something diaphanous by Badgley pimp slap Mishka to get them to do it together. And there was a wind machine going, and she's saying, have you ever seen the new moon in the vineyard? And she's going, and Debbie had put like small children on flying harnesses. And she had like a little black kid with a black thing going out behind, and a little Chinese kid in a yellow thing with that, that was sweeping out. And she had a little white kid in a pink thing, and a little Indian kid in a red thing, and they were all going back and forth, and they were fucking terrified. Yeah. And you could see they're going across the stage, like, oh, no! Many near misses like LAX on a busy weekend. <laughs> and Debbie and Vanessa's going, and it's the new moon and the colors that you see, and when it blows and it goes, and it's on and on and on. And the number finishes, tumultuous applause. And Whoopi comes out and says, something I've always wondered, what color is my wind? <laughs> I thought, well, we've gotten a fart joke on the Oscars show. We can all retire now or go on strike. So I thank them for the opportunity. Uh, also, this, so, uh, this is all by way of saying I'm about to sing a song, which I have no reason to sing. Uh, not, I mean, but I will brave my way through it, except there is one thing. It was, it's from Pippin. And in, originally, it, in the show, it is sung by an old queen. You're ahead of me on this. 
In the original production, it was Granny Clampett from the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> Irene Ryan, the late, great Irene Ryan. And so, <laughs> this is her number. If I remember it. When you are as old as I, my dear, and I hope that you never are, you will woefully wonder why, my dear, through your cataracts and catar, you could squander away or sequester the gift of a single year. For when your best days are yester, the rest are twice as dear. It's a field on a fine summer night when you sit all alone with the weeds. Or a succulent pear with what each juicy bite you spit out your teeth with the seeds. Before it's too late, stop trying to wait for fortune and fame you are secure of. For there's one thing that is certain, mate. There's nothing to be sure of. Oh. It's time to start living, time to take a little of the world we're given. Time to take time, cause winter turns to fall in just no time at all. I, I, I never worried if I was afraid when there was a challenge to take. I never cared about how much I weighed if there was still one piece of cake. Now maybe it's meant the hours I've spent be broken and bent and unwell. But there's one cure that is heaven sent. That's the chance to raise some hell. Your turns to fall in just no time at all. Now when the drearies do attack and the siege of the sands set in, I throw these regal shoulders back and lift my noble chins. Give me a man who's handsome and strong, someone who's stalwart and steady. A night that's romantic and long, and give me a month to get ready. Now I could waylay some aging Rue and persuade him to play in my cranny, but it's hard to feature getting swept away by a man who calls me Tranny. Now, this was the dance break, but it turns out the choreographers are also on strike. Very glad for that. Okay. Age is sweet, but age is sweet. Good works, good deeds bring you laurels. What could make you feel more obsolete than being noted for your morals? Here is a secret I never have told. Maybe you'll understand why. I believe if I refuse to grow old. I can be young till I die. Now I've known the fears of 66 years and rapids and tears by the score. But the only thing that I would train him for is 67 more. Oh, it's time to keep living. my time, so I'll throw off my show, and watching you fling be flung all over, makes me feel young all over in just no time at all. Eat your heart out, Granny Clamp, and I got through the song.